the first day on the job. Before you arrive at the job, make sure that you have showered and are wearing an effective deodorant and suitable footwear. Place your mobile phone and other personal items in a bag in the truck. You should also have clean, tidy hair, tied back if it's long, and look presentable. Introduce yourself and the team to the client, speaking clearly and politely. Make sure your footwear is appropriate for where you are working and check with the client that they are happy for you to walk on their floor coverings. Do a walkthrough of the home with the client, making sure you both understand how the move will take place and taking note of any special instructions they may have in regards to precious items or the house layout. Make sure to be attentive and reassuring at all times. Lunch and rest breaks are to be taken outside in an area designated by the client. Establish with the client that it is all right for your team to use their bathroom during the move and where you can get water while you're working. Under no circumstances is your team to smoke in the client's home or consume alcohol while working. Obscene language is never to be used in the presence of the client. Before lifting any heavy items, it is imperative that you have limbered up by stretching. Make sure again that your clothes are tidy and tucked in. When working in public areas, you must wear a high-vis vest. You should also have gloves for handling heavy items and a hat and sunblock. It is imperative that you have thoroughly surveyed your work area and identified any potential risks or hazards. Such hazards should be marked down on your risk assessment form. A team member must fill out the form before work commences. You and your co-workers should always work together as a team, keeping constant verbal and visual contact. Always know what your team members are doing when carrying objects together. Use a set route to avoid collision when carrying items in and out of the house. Protecting items when carrying. It is vitally important to make sure your client's items are protected when being transported. This will mean that you need to be aware of any damage that could occur to the client's furniture, including scratching. Before moving any item, inspect it for any pre-existing scratches or marks. Make sure you note these on your paperwork. Check that you are not wearing any rings, belts or buttons that could cause scratches. If you are using any equipment to help move the items, make sure all rough or hard surfaces are covered with a protective layer. Ensure all hazards have been identified in the path from the house to the truck, such as hoses, children's toys, pets and other objects. You do not want to trip and fall causing damage to yourself and the item. Equipment. The barrow, also called a trolley, can be used for moving boxes, white goods and metal cabinets. Ensure that the wheels of the barrow run smoothly and check that there are no rough edges that could damage the items to be moved. The Samson. This can also be called a piano trolley. It is used for moving heavy items and pianos on a flat surface. The dolly is a flat tray on four wheels and is used for moving desks and some heavy furniture items. To move the cartons, first tip the cartons away from the barrow Slide the barrow lip under and put a foot on the barrow rail. Tilt the barrow back until the handles are in a comfortable position for wheeling. When walking down a ramp, let the weight of the barrow work with you. It must go first. When walking up a ramp, you go first, pulling the barrow towards you. If the item is too heavy, have a teammate help by pushing. Make sure the door of the fridge is on the side with the handle facing down. Put a foot on the barrow rail and tilt the barrow back towards your body. 
It is important to have two team members working together when using a Samson. While one team member tips the heavy item away from himself, the other team member places the Samson underneath the item, making sure it is under the long part of the item. The team member holding the item should lower the full weight onto the Samson in a smooth and deliberate movement. The back of the item should be in line with the side of the Samson. Place the protective blanket inside the top lid of the piano for greater protection. The team members can now wheel it to its destination. Tilt the desk towards your partner. Have them place the dolly underneath the desk. With the load on the dolly, stand the desk up. The dolly should be fitting squarely underneath the item. Wheel to the new position or out to the truck. Remove the item from the dolly. Know your wrapping materials. During the course of a removal, you will need to be familiar with the different sorts of protective coverings that are available to protect the furniture and household items. There are several different sized boxes available, including the book carton, the standard carton, the porter robe, and the picture carton. These soft woven ties are used to prevent furniture moving during transit. They are designed to prevent rubbing and burn marks on furniture. Furniture pads are either made of felt or are a coarse quilted blanket. They are designed to wrap large items completely to prevent scratches and bumps. When wrapping items, ensure all surfaces are covered by the pad and the ends are tucked into the wrapping. There are several different sizes of plastic covers and they are colour coded. These are used to cover mattresses, lounge chairs and other soft furnishings. A plastic cover is sometimes better than wrapping a soft covered furniture item with a pad as it prevents dust and fluff from accumulating on the fabric. Bubble wrap is used to protect delicate items like statues and artworks. The paper used for wrapping items should be clean butcher's paper and clean tissue paper. Newspaper is never used. Tape is used to seal the boxes and in some instances to secure wrapping in place. It should never come into contact with any items of furniture. This causes damage to shiny surfaces as well as white goods. Packing procedures. Examples of some of the cartons used in the industry for packing are the book carton, the standard carton, the porter robe and the picture carton. When packing, a workstation can be made by taping two standard cartons together and then taping two flat book cartons on top of these to create a stable platform. The packing paper is then placed onto the platform. The standard carton can be used to pack items such as dinnerware, pots, saucepans, vases and glassware items. When preparing the carton for packing, it is taped along the middle first, then across the centre to secure the base. International standards require the carton to be taped along the sides to ensure pest control and to further secure the base. Identify a suitable item to raise the carton to a more comfortable packing level. Fold and tape two sides to allow easy packing access. Make a layer first by separating and crushing the paper and placing it into the base. Dinnerware is wrapped by separating each item with a sheet of paper, ensuring each plate is completely covered. Items are then folded into bundles of four or six, depending on the size of the set, and then wrapped securely. Each bundle is placed on its side with its base closest to the packer. Repeat this for each bundle across the carton. Bowls are wrapped and packed using the same method. Okay. 
Once the bottom layer is completed, paper crush is used to separate the layers. Items that come in two pieces should be wrapped together, with paper separating each piece and then bundled together to secure the smaller item. Large items may require more paper for protection. These are to be bundled and placed on the open edge. Some items may require the paper to be spread out to ensure it is completely covered with paper when wrapping the item. Saucepans, pots and pans can be placed on the top layer and more crush added to this before closing and sealing. A typical standard carton will look similar to this cross section consisting of a layer of crush, heavier items, another layer of crush, lighter items and a final layer of crush. Wine glasses are wrapped with consideration made to the careful twisting of the paper around the fragile stem. Use two sheets of paper to complete the wrapping and place the glass into the carton, drinking edge down. Tumblers are wrapped in a similar method and are also placed drinking edge down. A layer of crush is used to protect the contents before sealing. Book cartons can be used to pack items such as books, lampshades, figurines, wine bottles, medicine and bathroom cabinet contents. Prepare by firstly placing a folded sheet of paper in the bottom of it. Hard-covered books are wrapped individually. While several books may be wrapped by separating the books with paper, creating a bundle. Paper bag books and soft covers can be placed directly into the carton. Wine bottles are to be wrapped individually and placed on their side so they are secure. Wine bottles are then inverted to secure the set of five and crush is placed on top of each layer for added protection. Alternate this configuration for each layer so that the weight is evenly distributed. When packing lampshades, place paper and crush in the bottom of the book carton. Lampshades are lightly draped with paper and individually wrapped before placing lightly into the carton. The lampshade is then surrounded by crush with a folded sheet of paper placed on the top. The porter robe is used to hang clothing for transportation during removal. When packing the porter robe, ensure the metal hanging rail is securely in place before hanging the clothes in the carton. Longer items can be draped to allow them to hang freely. Close the porter robe and ensure the hanging rail is taped securely to the sides of the carton. Picture cartons can be used to pack paintings, artwork, mirrors and framed photos. After the base has been sealed, place a layer of crush onto the bottom. The pre-wrapped item is then carefully placed into the carton, with some crush inserted down the sides for support before sealing. TV Plasma Carton The TV Plasma Carton base is pre-assembled and the foam inserts are placed into the base. Cover the television with the appropriate packing material and place the television into the box by securing it into the pre-positioned foam inserts. Complete the process by placing the external box over the base and securing the two foam inserts to the top of the television unit. The carton is then closed by tightening the straps provided. Taping the box closed is optional. Bike Carton 
After taping the base and following the bike packing tips, place the prepared bike frame into the carton along with any additional bike parts. Wrapping additional parts is optional. Priority carton. This is used for items such as remote controls, television leads and tools required to assemble furniture. The priority carton is prepared for the customer so that these important items are easily accessible at the final destination. Items required for the operation of electronic equipment and furniture assembly tools are individually wrapped, labelled and placed into this carton. Carton labelling. Ensure each carton is correctly labelled with the client's name, destination, room and contents. Additional adhesive labels should be placed where indicated as required. Lifting and carrying in a team. Sometimes it is better to carry items with two people. Bend your knees and keep your back straight. Talk to each other during the lift so you know how each person is going. Before lifting any items, make sure the tops are attached to the item. When lifting an item with two people, you should mirror your partner's actions. Tilt to the lounge forward. Bend your knees and keep your back straight. Watch your teammate as your hands should mirror each other. Tilt the table backwards onto its side, bending your knees and keeping your back straight. Watch your teammate as your hands should mirror each other. With the table on its side, the front legs of the table go through the doorway first. The table is then moved around the door frame with the rear legs following in the semicircular pathway. Make sure you are balanced before beginning to go up or down the steps. The person at the lowest edge will be carrying the most weight. Work slowly and carefully. You will not be able to see everything and you may have to rely on your teammate for directions, including telling you when you have reached the bottom of the stairs. Hey, it's Matt again with Moving Connections and today I'm here with Jason. He's one of our lead movers. He's an expert in moving. Uh, so today, Jason, I want to ask you about how to move an upright piano and I have some footage from last year with you and another one of our movers um, and you use a uh, four-wheel dolly but take us through kind of um, your thought process and how to move a, an upright piano. So you pull the piano out from the wall about two feet you place your dolly in front of the piano by the pedals centered the other co-worker will go to the other end of the piano uh -huh. there's handles in the back and you grab it underneath the piano. Uh -huh. You never grab the leg. So you, you lift up with your legs, put it over in the yeah. center of the four-wheeler, set it down. Okay, roll back the time machine to last year. We're going to show some footage of you uh, moving an upright piano with just one other guy. Uh, so, have you ever seen Wayne World, Wayne's World? You know how they go into their little world and they go this is our stair ramp, which holds up to 2,000 pounds and covers up to six steps. This comes in real handy when moving pianos. Because most houses have steps going up to the front entrance, here's the four-wheel dolly we're using, and here's the upright piano we're moving. When you, there's handles on the back and you go underneath the piano in the front, you never lift with the legs, you'll snap the legs off and always tilt the piano back because if you have weight on the front you're going to snap the front legs. Make sure you have it in the middle of the dolly, lift down and there you go. You have a piano on a four-wheeler. Going through doorways is tricky. Be very careful. In most cases you want to protect the piano with moving pads. Now we're going over the threshold and we're going to use gravity to help us. The mover going out of the doorway is lifting up his end of the piano. At the same time, the other mover is pushing the piano through the door. The front mover sets the wheels down 
and the back mover picks his end up to lift the wheels over the threshold. Until the piano is out of the house, the back mover can set the piano down. As we prepare to go down the ramp, we make sure we're both ready to proceed carefully. It's a very bumpy ride. Both movers have grip of the piano. Back mover has his hands on the top and front. The front mover has the handle. Going up the ramp, the front mover is steering the piano up into the truck as the, the back mover is pushing. As soon as you get it up into the front of the truck, pad the piano, make sure you center the piano to the front of the truck, secure the piano to the truck, Make sure you have two straps securing it. And that's it with the piano. Your other coworker um, will get on the other end. There's always handles in the back of the piano. So you always lift with your legs, not with your back. Or you'll be hurting at the end of the day. Now, will this work if there's stairs involved? piano on this four wheel. Yes, it will work if you have straps to go. You first blanket the piano over the top. You get a strap. Let's say the piano's on there centered. You put the blanket around the piano for the straps. Strap it, go underneath the dolly and strap it to the four wheeler. Um, if you don't have a stair ramp, um, that's the best way to do it. So, let's say we can't go out the front door. Um, there's an easier way out the back door. So this comes in handy. And this is a six-wheeler. It's a, it's a swivel. You can turn on a dime on it. So same thing. You put this in the middle of the piano. You lift the piano up on you know, centered in between here and there. This is your high high point, this is your low point. And you use this going out the back door because of the terrain, right? That's right. So the terrain, you go With over these dirt. these wheels can cover. You go over grass, dirt, dirt, you know, road, bumps. You can strap this the same way as the four-wheeler. Mm -hmm. Strap this to the piano, and you can actually go downstairs with this, you could go down 18 stairs in a home with this dolly. Wow. So, I've um, done it quite a few times. It's the easiest way to do it if you know how to do it. Don't do it at home or if you don't know how to do it, ask for professional help. Furniture straps are made of heavy leather and are used for lifting and carrying heavy, bulky items over short distances. This method is used when the article has a short leg to keep the strap under the item. Slide the buckle end of the strap under the item from back to front. Put yourself at the end of the item with the long end of the strap over one shoulder. Adjust the strap length. The buckle should be between the body and the load, not on the shoulder. 
mirror the position of your partner. Straighten your legs and lift the article away from your feet. You should be able to move the article comfortably. Before climbing stairs, the person at the bottom will need to shorten their strap to keep the load level. Put the article down to do this. This method is used when the article has no leg to keep the strap under the item. Tilt the item to one side and lay one strap diagonally on the floor beneath it with the buckle to the front of the item. Repeat this step to the other side to position the second strap. Put yourself at one end of the item and put the long end of the strap over your shoulder from the back. Thread it through the buckle of the other strap at the front. Straighten your legs and lift the item, keeping it away from your body with your hands. You should be able to move the article comfortably. Safety in and around the truck. Your vehicle is considered your place of work. That means you should always keep the cabin clean and tidy and hazard free. Smoking in the truck is not allowed. At the end of the working day, it is your responsibility to remove all rubbish and personal items and ensure it is left in a clean and tidy condition for the next day. When getting out of a truck, never go frontwards. Always back down, maintaining three points of contact with the truck. Grasp the front hand door grip with one hand, place a foot on the truck's upper step, steady yourself with your other hand and step down. Before parking, check for obstructions, including overhead wires and overhanging branches. If parking on private property, including a client's, check with the owner that where you intend to park is okay and will not cause obstruction. Remember, it may be there all day, so check that no vehicles are blocked from exiting the driveway. If you are parking on a public road, remember to be wearing your high-vis clothing and place at least three traffic control triangles 50 metres from the front and rear of the truck and one to the side of the truck. Discuss with the driver exactly where the truck is to be positioned and make sure you both understand the hand signals. Place yourself at the back right-hand corner of the truck so the driver can see your hand signals. Allow enough room for walk-up boards when positioning the truck and make sure there is a clear path from the walk-up boards to the access point.